So one of the key aspects of the Tau of HashiCorp is the notion of immutability, right? The idea that once we create a thing, we don't change it after creation. And so one thing we get asked often is, what's the difference, right? What's the difference between a mutable approach and an immutable approach? What are the advantages or trade-offs between them? So briefly, when we talk about a mutable approach, what we're really talking about is, let's say I'm creating a server, right? This is maybe a VM. You know, maybe it's a you know, bare metal, it doesn't really matter, right? And now I want this server to be, let's call it a web server. So I'm gonna deploy something like, call it Apache, you know, maybe 2.4 as my web server, and then I'm deploying my app as well. Let's call it, you know, web server version one. And this is my server. So now I have traffic coming in, users that are sort of making requests to this thing. <coughs> But over time, I want to make changes, right? I want to upgrade the version of the web server. Maybe I want to update to a more modern version of Apache, or maybe I want to switch to a different web server like Nginx, right? So the way to think about what we're doing is over here we've defined, call this version one of our web server, right? And so what we're going to do is go back and define what we want version two to look like, right? So version two, in sort of an ideal world, we're going to update our web server, let's just say to version 2, and instead of Apache, we're going to use, call it Nginx. So we have Nginx, and so this is our sort of version 2 of the world, right? And this could again be a server or a VM, whatnot. So now in a mutable world, what we're going to do is try and upgrade this existing server to this new version two configuration, right? We're gonna mutate it, modify it in place to get into this new configuration, right? So typically this is gonna be done with something like configuration management, right? So we have a configuration management tool. You know, this could be Chef, Puppet, Ansible, something like that. So we're gonna run the config management the first time around to make the world look like this, and then we'll rerun it once we've updated our definition to go from version one to version two. Right? So what's nice about that is we already have this existing server, right? The server exists, maybe we have data that we've written locally, right? And that our web server is consuming. And so when we update in place, we don't have to worry about moving the data around to other machines, creating a new machine, all of the infrastructure already exists, right? All we're gonna do is perform this upgrade. Now the challenge of Mutable and sort of the trade-off with it is what happens if this doesn't upgrade perfectly? It's not a perfectly clean upgrade, right? Because in the real world, things go wrong, right? So maybe when we trigger this upgrade, the first thing we're gonna look to do is say, well, we need to install this new version of Nginx because we don't use Nginx over here, right? So we'll go and try and run maybe, you know, app get install of Nginx, right? And we want that installed, but this could fail. Right? So it could be that at that moment when we ran the tool, maybe our network was flaky, maybe DNS was down, maybe our app repos weren't responsive. Who knows? There's a million reasons why it could fail. And so now we end up in this sort of funky state where maybe Nginx didn't install, but we did manage to deploy sort of version two of our web server. So now we're in this sort of interesting kind of situation where, you know, over here, we tested what version two looked like. We understood, okay, version two of our app with Nginx, we understand this works, we've tested it, we validated it. And version one with Apache and our web server, we understood, validated, tested it. But now we're sort of in neither of these things. We're kind of in this weird version 1.56, right? That is not poorly, it's not well understood, right? We have Apache still running, we don't have Nginx, plus we have our new version of our web server, right? So what you would call this is sort of a partial upgrade, right? Or sort of if we think in terms of sort of like database land, it's sort of a partially committed transaction. Part of the changes took place, part of the changes did not take place, right? So what does this introduce for us? It introduces a few things, which is this upgrade process has the downside of introducing risk, right? The risk is now we're in some sort of, you know, kind of half failure scenario, right? And the other side of it is it adds complexity, right? So if I was doing QA, I understood what version one would look like. I tested it, I validated it. Same with version two, I tested it, I validated it. 
I never tested or validated 1.56. I don't understand what, what version 1.56 is because I never anticipated being in this state. But here I am now, right? So now I have the complexity of figuring out is there an upgrade path possible from version 1.56 to version 2? And what is the experience of the users as traffic is now hitting version 1.56? Does the website work? Are they getting errors? What's happening, right? And so this is, you know, call it complex, even with a single machine. But now I imagine I have you know, a fleet of many hundreds or many thousands of machines, and they all fail in slightly different ways, right? So maybe one of them failed to install Nginx, but the other one installed Nginx but failed to install you know, the web server. Maybe a third machine failed to uninstall Apache. So you end up with a sort of proliferation of, well, there's 1.56, but 1.54, there's 1.78, right? And you have to start thinking about your versioning not as a discrete version 1 and version 2, but as sort of a continuous spectrum where everything in the middle is also possible. Right? And so this becomes a really complex scenario to be in. Right? And you might say this seems impractical. right? In practice, 99% of the time, this thing just works. And that's true. The problem is 99% of the time, something working times 1,000 machines means a fair bit of the time it's not working. Right? And so you end up with these complex to debug problems, which is 1 in 10 requests gets an error, or 1 in 10 requests is slightly slower than it should be. Right? And these become incredibly hard to debug because your system is in a poorly understood state. Right? So that brings us to sort of the alternate way of thinking about this, which is you know, if this is mutable, then how do we think in terms of an immutable world? And so the difference is when we go immutable, we don't want to ever upgrade in place. Once the server exists, we never try to upgrade it to v2. Right? So what we'll do is create our server, call it version 1 again. We'll install Apache. We'll install our web server. Right? And we'll take a snapshot of this image. Right? And we'll call this version 1 of our server. So then we'll go and boot this. We'll create, let's say, a VM. And then we'll allow user traffic to start coming into this. Right? So great, we've deployed version 1 of our VM, just like we did in our sort of mutable configuration. But now, when we want to go to version 2, what we're going to do is create a brand new server. Right? And so this one will have web server v2, plus it'll have Nginx. And this is v2. And this is on a new VM. Right? So if this was VM1, this is VM2. Right? So it's a distinct machine. We're not trying to upgrade the existing infrastructure. And so now if this was successful, if we brought up a new machine without errors, right? so if there's any error, we'll abort this, throw this thing away, and try it again. But if we successfully created V2, there was no errors, everything installed, then what we'll do is switch traffic over so our user now starts hitting V2 instead of hitting V1. And then we'll just decommission version 1. Right? We'll take that VM out of production, or destroy it, or recycle it for some other purpose, so on and so forth. But the goal is we never tried to in place modify this system. So what this lets us do is have a notion of discrete versioning. There was either version 1 running, and that's where traffic went, or there was version 2 running, and that's where traffic went. This middle zone doesn't exist. Right? There was no version 1.5. That was sort of in between these things, right? And so the advantage of this becomes, as we think about risk and complexity, there's much lower risk, right? Because we don't have these sort of undefined states that aren't validated. But we also reduce the complexity of our infrastructure. Because now I can talk in terms of histograms. I can say I have you know, 50 machines in version 1 and 20 machines in version 2, right? As opposed to trying to talk about it as, you know, I have some distribution of machines in different versions. Right? So it's much lower complexity as I reason about what this infrastructure looks like. Right? So it's not without trade-offs, because what if this application had state? Right? What if this app was writing to its local disk? It had data that mattered to the application. Well, here what we said is create a new machine, delete that machine, including its data, including its disk. Right? So that clearly doesn't work. So to make this effective, what you generally need to do is externalize the data. So instead of it being on box with the same application, maybe I use an external database that's shared. Right? So my first VM is writing to the database. 
but it's the same one that my second one is using. So as I make this transition, I don't have to worry that I'm destroying the data on this box because I've sort of externalized it, right? And so this becomes key is, you know, that externalization of data allows the immutable pattern to be applied here, right? And in general, you know, database-like systems uh, tend to be updated much less often uh, than things like our applications. So these we might say, you know what, we're going to use a mutable approach to managing databases because it's so infrequent and we don't have to bother with data migration, right? Or if you're in sort of a cloud environment and you have things like, you know, Elastic Block Store or externalized software-defined storage, maybe what we're doing is the underlying disk is mutable, but even the machine running our database is still immutable, right? And what we might do is, you know, shut down the VM that's running, you know, who knows, you know, MySQL version, you know, 7, we'll shut that down, we'll bring up a new one running MySQL version 8, and reattach it to the same disk. So in this way, the data itself isn't being lost, it's just the machine, the compute, is being moved from one version to the other, right? So there's different approaches in terms of how we would make immutable work. But this is fundamentally the distinction is, do we take existing infrastructure and try and upgrade in place, or do we take existing infrastructure, create new infrastructure running at the new versions, and destroy the existing thing in place? And that's the core distinction between mutable and immutable infrastructure.